guys, Steve Girardi here. Welcome to Steve Strings. Today I'm going to be showing you a makeover. A makeover of the very first cigar box instrument I ever made. This was my first instrument. It is a diddly bow made from an old 2x4 scrap that had been sitting around in my garage. And I'll show you um, the things that are wrong with this as my first build. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do about uh, fixing that. First of all, you can see here that my very first attempt, I tried to make something using an eye bolt as a tuner. And uh, since I used fishing line as the string, it stretched and stretched and stretched and I couldn't get enough uh, stretch out of that. So I ended up um, adding this regular uh, um, guitar tuner to it. And that worked better, but still um, it's not really ideal. <clears throat> also, and this instrument here, and, and I should say that I did, uh, I introduced this some time ago, and I can put the link up here. <clears throat> but um, when I cut this one here, I, I cut the sound hole in order to cut away the little brand that was in the back here. And that really took away a lot of the resonating surface of the box. And so that was kind of a, not a good thing. The other thing on the inside here <clears throat> is I put these um, half inch um, plywood pieces in in order to screw the neck in. And I did that because I was using the bottom as a resonating surface. And since this lid came off, I couldn't really secure it to that lid. So because of this, this is kind of heavy. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drill some uh, good sized holes in here using a Forstner bit to kind of lighten up this box. I'm then gonna go and I'm going to uh, cut down uh, this neck in order to put a scarf joint in there and then put three proper tuners in and then convert this from a one string diddly bow to a three string fretless uh, slide cigar box guitar. So uh, stick around and watch how I do that. Alrighty, so I've taken off the hardware that I had on here. You can see that's all but taken off. And uh, the tailpiece I had on here was just a thing used to uh, hang a picture. So I've taken that off. I'll be putting a hinge on for a tailpiece. But here you can see I have a half inch thick of uh, plywood in there. And this thing is really overbuilt. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill some holes in the back of that to lighten up this uh, instrument. Okay, so I've got this box ready. I've got a forster bit. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill four holes in there to lighten this up. There we go, that's four holes. Okay, I've got the guitar clamped in here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the old headstock square and then I'll do a scarf joint. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this on here. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a cut. Now that it's all clamped in there good and tight. There we go. So now I've got a scarf joint. I just go to clean that up and uh, glue the other piece on. My original thought here was I would put a scarf joint on here and glue a piece of wood in for the headstock. Then I realized that because this neck was so thick that I actually can just cut that and just carve that away. So what I'm going to do is I drew, drew, I drew a line here, the width of what I want the headstock to be. 
I'm gonna go ahead and basically just carve and shape this neck to basically shape the, uh, the headstock from this. So that's the plan, I'm gonna go ahead and carve this up. Okay, I've now gone ahead and uh, cut away that piece of wood. So now I have an angled uh, headstock. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and shape this neck to make it all blend together. So I finished uh, shaping and sanding the neck and I have it to the dimensions I think I'd like all right. And you can see here I screwed, or I, sorry, I drilled in the, uh, the holes for the tuning pegs. Had a little bit of tear out there but that shouldn't be a problem because they'll be covered. Also where the old tail piece had been, I'm putting a new tail piece on. This is the new tail piece I'm going to be putting on here. So I went ahead and marked uh, and drilled for new holes for that one there. The tuning machines I plan on using for this are, are tuning machines I salvaged off of a toy ukulele. I think it was a SpongeBob uh, ukulele. I used one of these tuning pegs on a diddly bow that I made. Uh, so the other three, I, I may use the bridge and saddle for this as well. I'm not sure yet. But next thing to do is to go ahead and take and I'll go ahead and treat this with linseed oil. And then we'll go ahead and put all the hardware on. All right, I've got some linseed oil here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this to treat to treat the uh, the neck. And I've done this before. You can see that the linseed oil turns the wood a little more amber. Yeah, the linseed oil turns the wood a little more amber, darkens it a little bit. Here on the other side, you can see the color of the wood from the last time it was treated. Some folks will put a couple coats on this and let it uh, wait a while between coats. Sometimes uh, treating it will raise the grain on the wood. So if it does, you can sand it back down. I don't think that'll be necessary for this one here. I don't think it raised the grain last time. So basically what you do with linseed oil is you basically just wipe it on, let it set for a bit and then come back and wipe it back off. Right, I'll go ahead and do the rest of this wood that's exposed as well while I'm at it. All right, I've put the linseed oil on and I've uh, gone and I've cut a groove for the, the saddle, I'm sorry, for the nut, which will, I just use this rat tail file for that. And I have this, uh, this bolt that I found literally on the side of the road while I was out walking the dog. And when I did to prep this, I basically just filed uh, the bottom of that sort of flatter so that I can get better contact here with that groove that I carved in. So this will serve for the, for the nut on the instrument. Alrighty, I finished putting the hardware on. Here you can see I put these uh, tuning machines on, and again, these tuning machines uh, I salvaged from a SpongeBob uh, a plastic ukulele, and the tailpiece here is a cabinet hinge. And again, the inside here you can see this is where I, I drilled out those holes to make the body a little lighter. I'm going to go ahead and string this up. I have this uh, bolt that I'll be using, I'm sorry, it's a, a screw rather, I'll be using as the nut. And um, I'm going to be using um, these uh, acoustic strings. I'll be using the, the uh, 
the high strings to tune this one up. I think I'll do it uh, G, D, G. So I'll get it tuned up and come right back. Here it is, all strung up. So I have this one strung up with um, 24, 16, and 12s. G, D, G. And just to reiterate, the uh, saddle here is a bridge and saddle from a SpongeBob's uh, toy ukulele, and so are the tuners. This uh, nut is a screw that I found literally on the side of the road while I was walking the dog. And this uh, tailpiece is a, a cabinet hinge. So now that it's all strung up and tuned up, let's go ahead and give you a sound sample. So there you go. So this is my three string cigar box guitar adapted from my very first build, my very first build, which was a diddly bow. So go ahead and check out the, uh, the very first um, video that I did on this original build. And uh, let me know what you think about this one compared to that one. Thanks for watching.